Today we're looking at the AGM88 Harm in the basic has Harm as Sensor mode. This is limited in functionality and range compared to other modes which will be coming later. The AGM88 Harm, high speed anti-radiation missile is designed to take out ground based radar systems. Let's get into it. Set up by selecting air to ground master mode. Open the SMS page. Ensure AGM88 is selected and hit the power button. We'll then open the weapons page. If you do not already have one configured, Hit an existing menu button twice, and then select weapon. I'd recommend keeping your HSD on the other display as you will find it very useful for referencing during attacks. On our weapon page we've got the harm display, top left we can select the mode, limited to has for now. Our radar table which we can cycle through by pressing the on screen button. Each table allows us to search for up to 5 radar emission types, shown down the left hand side. We can also cycle the selected table with TMS left when it is set to soy. Table 1 gives us long range, 2 shorter range and 3 older systems by default. If we hit the search button we can toggle specific radars on or off if desired from the table. We return by pressing has once more. The selected table can be edited by pressing the UFC button but we'll get into that later. In the center we've got our search mode with wide, center, left and right bias. You can cycle the search mode with the expand slash fov button to press. Center provides the narrowest field of view, ideal for targeting threats on your nose. Below we've got the detected threat status box in green which will list all the detected radars from our selected table. We've then got the time remaining to complete a full scan and the number of scan cycles completed. Much like a radar, the larger the area we scan and the more threats we're searching for, the longer it will take to complete a scan and detect all radars within its field of view. This doesn't mean it'll always take the full amount of time to detect a threat, but of course it does slow down the detection speed. If we're in a hurry, we can shorten this delay by filtering out radars with the search to deselect unwanted types, or we can make the search area narrower with a sensor button. Each time you make a change, the display will restart its scan discarding all previous detected threats, so don't do this moments before you intend to fire. On the right hand, we can also manually restart the scan with the RS button. Inside the dashed red box, we've got the harms foot of view. Each vertical bar is 20 degrees of azimuth, left or right, whilst the horizontal bars are 22.5 degrees of pitch apart. The cursor is represented by two bracketed lines. You can slew the cursor with the radar cursor controls. Detected radar emissions will show up with their type followed by either an A for active or T for tracking, which indicates they are either guiding a missile or about to launch one. The display can only show up to 10 radar emissions in total. Lastly, at the bottom we've got the weapons stations armed with harms, with the selected station highlighted. Pressing the missile step button will cycle between them. If we cursor over a detected threat and press TMS up, we will lock it and enter foresight mode, handing off the missile to our target. The display also filters to just the selected emitter type. Once handoff is complete, ready will appear. Pressing TMS right will cycle to any other detected emitter of the same type within the field of view. Meanwhile, on our HUD, we've got the harm target box. This will flash when a harm is handed off, targeting a radar. TMS up once more will drop the handoff and return back to search mode. Alright, so let's shoot some harms. Select an appropriate table containing your desired target with TMS left. Filter and adjust the field of view as desired, and then using your RWR and HSD as reference, fly towards the threat until you pick it up with the harm. Slew the cursor over the threat box and press TMS up. This will hand off your selected missile onto the radar and enter boresight mode. Ideally you want to center the radar icon but it's not required. Wait until ready is displayed to indicate the handoff is complete, and then press and hold the pickle button to launch. Call out magnum on the radio to inform your flight of the launch if desired. Now with that said, we'll need to consider the limitations of HAS. Armour sensor mode cannot resolve the range to a target and therefore does not know if the missile is in range. As a result, it does not use a loft flight profile either. That is to say, the missile will always fly directly at the handed off radar threat, rather than flying higher and diving onto it. This reduces its effective range significantly. 
Whilst the Han can achieve ranges of almost 70 nautical miles in ideal conditions when lofting, we are limited to a mere 40 nautical miles maximum with has mode. As a result, the advantage of flying higher is less than it would be in other modes. Because of this, make heavy use of your HSD page, which will show known radar sight threat rings and the RWR, along with your own situational awareness to ensure that you are within range when you launch. Don't forget you can use the separate button next to the RWR to help you read overlapping radar returns. You should also consider setting up steer points on targets which can be used for ranging information directly on your HUD. Be aware that there is no IFF built into the harm system, so take care not to shoot friendly SAM sites. Lastly, we cannot launch at a threat we cannot detect in HAS mode. This will force you in close on short range SAM sites before you can fire, even if you've got greater range than them. These limitations are overcome with other modes and the HTS or harm targeting system which will be coming to DCS later. It should be possible to hand off multiple missiles at once onto separate targets. The station handoff logic is not fully implemented at time of recording however. Using BMS to demonstrate, this is achieved by targeting an emission, waiting for handoff to complete, and then press the missile step button and set up your second missile independent of the first. You can then rapidly launch both so you do not have to deal with the asymmetry when you set up your second shot. Ok, so we can aim, shoot and know how to approximate the range to our targets. Let's now look at creating custom radar tables. We can edit our tables by either pressing the UFC on the weapon page, or we can press the list button on the ICP, select MISC with 0, and then HARM with 0 once more. From here we've got our selected table shown in the top left which we can increment with the ICP, and the radar fields shown as T1 through 5, which we can also cycle up and down. Unfortunately, they use code numbers rather than their names, so we'll need to reference a chart, kneeboard or guide, on what these codes represent. I've got a link in the description, listing them all for you for reference. There is also talk of Eagle Dynamics adding them as a default kneeboard in the game later. As an example, we'll quickly set up a table that contains a Hawk search radar and track radar, Patriot radar, and a Rapier launcher and tracker. We'll select the top field, We'll enter 1, 2, 4, and press enter. And this has set our rapier track radar, we'll increment down, and we'll enter 1, 2, 5, to set the rapier launcher radar. 2, 0, 2 for the Patriot radar, and the Hawk sight with 2, 0, 3, and 2, 0, 4. Now we've got our table configured, you can see the list on the weapons page, and we'll be able to detect the new set of radars with our harm. That's all there is to the harm with has mode. As mentioned, more capable modes and tools such as the harm targeting system pod will be available at a later date which will greatly enhance the Viper's abilities. I hope you enjoyed, and take care.